Today, a tweet was deleted, and I know you're probably thinking, is that really news? But stick with me for a second, because this was not really any ordinary tweet. This was one posted by the official Twitter account of the Republicans of the House Judiciary Committee, an august body, run by Congressman Jim Jordan. And here's the tweet. Kanye, period, Elon, period, Trump, period. It was posted almost two months ago, and it's just been sitting there like that since then. And honestly, you could put that tweet, I think, in the history books. It is the perfect, the perfect distillation of the current vibe of the conservative movement and Republican Party at this very moment, celebrating three right-wing trolls purely because they make liberals angry. Just pure nihilistic grievance politics, which is, of course, honestly, the only real binding ideology of the entire conservative movement in this country at this moment. Now, the tweet today was deleted, likely because um, the first man on that list, rapper Kanye West, who now goes by Ye, he became something of a conservative star a few months ago after he sat down for a fawning interview with Tucker Carlson, who couldn't stop talking about how fascinating and interesting, provocative he was. Showered with effusive praise on the rapper in the aftermath of Kanye West appearing at Paris Fashion Week in a trolling White Lives Matter t-shirt. Now, of course, it was later revealed that Carlson show had actually selectively edited that interview to cut out the portions of the interview of Wes Answers, where he went on multiple anti-Semitic tirades. But not every interview West has given in the recent weeks has had the luxury of being pre-taped, and so much of that vile anti-Semitism has been on full display. Most recently, just today, you may have seen word of this uh, in a bizarre and really upsetting, downright unnerving interview with the right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Now, Jones tried to tee up a softball question and give Kanye West the opportunity to deny being a Nazi sympathizer, an opportunity that Kanye West did not take. Um, so we think small snippet of West comments are worth playing to you. We're not going to play a lot of it, just so you can see this for itself. Uh, the caveat being that the comments are both offensive and also patently untrue. You're not a Nazi. You don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well, I I see I I see good things about Hitler. Also, this guy that invented highways, invented the very microphone that I use as a musician. You can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good. And I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. OK, Hitler did not invent the microphone. Uh, I mean, that's just to begin with. But OK, so you get the vibe there, right? That, I think it gives you a taste. If you didn't watch it, that's what we're dealing with. I mean, they went on for that like for a long time and lots more where that came from, that kind of thing. Now, this is a guy who is supposed to be a new face of American conservatism. And we should note here, too, that West has been open in the past about his struggles with mental illness. And in an interview on a different right-wing podcast earlier this week, he admitted he was being prescribed medication, which he's refusing to take. And as he has previously attested, the reason he won't take his medication is that he believes his medical diagnosis is part of a conspiracy against him by Jewish doctors. The thing about the red hat that drove me to a point of exhaustion, which was misdiagnosed by a I'm not going to say what race, what people, uh, doctor, and what hospital, and what media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. Despite the fact that this man very clearly appears to be in crisis and is spewing vile garbage, he has remained, uh, until today, we'll see what happens, something of a darling of the political right. Like, this is, he's been doing this for a few months now. Last week, in the midst of this very ugly public meltdown, West had dinner with Donald Trump and Mar-a-Lago. In fact, the two men have had something of a political kinship since Trump was elected president. Kanye visited him in the White House with his MAGA hat. And while a lot has been said about the fact that West brought Nick Fuentes, who himself is an avowed white nationalist and anti-Semite anti Holocaust denier to that dinner, it's worth noting Kanye, the guy who was just praising Adolf Hitler, was the invited guest. And again, that dinner came well after West tweeted he was going to go, quote, death con three on Jewish people. OK, he's been saying all this out loud in front of everyone for weeks, guys. That brings us to the next guy on the Mount Rushmore of conservative trolls who was in that original House Judiciary Committee tweet by the Republicans, Elon Musk. 
See, after Kanye posted that tweet, the death con about Jewish people, his Twitter account was restricted, but Elon Musk, who recently purchased Twitter and has been running into the ground at breakneck speed, welcomed West, among with other right-wing trolls and bigots, back onto the platform. Among the people he welcomed back on the platform is the third person in that tweet, Donald Trump himself, who has so far refused Musk's increasingly desperate entreaties to return. But not content with mere complete control over one of the most important political platforms in our political world, Musk is also an active participant on the website he is destroying, most infamously spreading a vile and homophobic conspiratorial lie about Nancy Pelosi's aged husband, Paul, who was brutally assaulted with a hammer in his home earlier this year. A theory that was, of course, similarly amplified by the other troll, Donald Trump himself, the final boss of the Republican troll caucus. Now, Donald Trump did not invent the politics of grievance and nihilistic trolling and seeking negative attention that has consumed his party, but he was the first politician in this particular age to truly wield it to great effect, riding a wave of resentment to his fluke election back in 2016. But here's the thing. It turns out that this form of obsessive negative attention seeking that we see from all three of those, not real popular with like most people, with regular voters, with normal people. People who correctly see it as gross and off-putting and weird. It is one of the reasons why Republican candidates did so poorly in last month's midterm elections, particularly those the most Trump aligned, the most inclined to this kind of behavior. The Republican Party, thanks to Donald Trump, thanks to the people that staffed the party who put up that tweet, nominated a bunch of anti-social weirdos. Arizona gubernatorial loser Kerry Lake, for example, who campaigned on stuff like this. We may have won this battle, and I won an epic battle in Arizona. We drove a stake through the heart of the McCain machine. We don't have any McCain Republicans in here, do we? All right, if you want to get the hell out, we will take this country back. It'll be the Trump Republicans. Probably could have used a few more McCain Republicans voting for her or she wouldn't have lost, you know? But more than that, like, I really think that normal people, I mean, whatever that phrase means, right, like the mass of people, the median voter, whatever you want to call it, they don't talk like that. Telling everyone who you hate all the time isn't a platform. But just because this latest round of MAGA trolls lost doesn't mean the movement is dead, not by a long shot. In fact, against all odds and against all common sense, they're full steam ahead on this train. Because when Republicans take control of the House next month, their, their spiritual leader, their mascot, in a sense, will be Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who you may remember was stripped of her committee assignments early this year, in part over her own anti-Semitic conspiracy theories that the Rothschilds had used a laser to start the California forest fires, and who received this glowing reception at a political conference organized by none other than, yes, Nick Fuentes, the same white supremacist who dined with Kanye and Trump. We are honored, we are humbled and excited to welcome to the stage right now for our first speech, and we'd love to get to know her much better. I think this is going to be the beginning of something great. The representative from Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Are you triggered, Libs? Because I'm smiling and shaking hands with a guy who compares the Holocaust to Cookie Monster cooking cookies. Does that bother you? That's member of Congress. She's going to have committee assignments. She's going to be in Kevin McCarthy's ear. She's going to be calling a lot of shots.